Today's Monday, December 17th, and I'm going to review the requirements that go with the storybook that are due on Thursday. Um, using my example, I'm going to walk through what the rubric um, looked like that I handed out at the very beginning of the project, which would have been Monday, December 3rd, I believe. Um, and I'm going to show my example and kind of walk through what it's going to look like at the end. Um, keep in mind that this week during class, any extra time that we have after we read A Christmas Carol will be spent working on the storybook. So um, if you're absent, it's very, very important that you're working on this at home. Um, okay, so the first thing that's already been graded is um, I've graded and collected the Works Cited page, it, page and the three research charts. I did not keep any of these. I graded them in class last week while students were working so that they could have these when they went home. And in the end, um, students should have gone through and highlighted what they would put in parentheses for their parenthetical documentation so that if they take a fact from this chart, um, th this is what they're putting in the parentheses to show that and so on. Um, this is the rubric that um, goes with the actual storybook. Um, I'm not going to go over the rubric that goes with the research because I've already graded the research and those are ent entered in Infinite Campus already for those that I have graded. Um, so starting with the actual overall requirement, um, there needs to be a cover on the book. Um, I showed examples in class of students that made them. It could just be printed off the internet. Um, it just needs to make up a title that goes with your story and your name, basically. And then you need to put some kind of colored illustration on the front. It could be a printout from the computer. Um, it could be something hand-drawn, and it does need to be colored. So if you print in black and white, then you need to color it in some way with marker or colored pencils. Um, and it does need to relate to something that goes with the Victorian era and ties to your story. The st storybook needs to be bound in some way. Um, I showed examples of ones that were hole punched and tied with ribbon, that were um, made a cover out of cardstock, or were just put into like a three-pronged folder or um, report cover. Anything's fine as long as it's just not loosey-goosey. Um, the story should be paragraphed appropriately. We've talked about appropriate uh, starting new paragraphs for dialogue, but also for changes in setting or time or event. Um, it shouldn't just be one big paragraph for the whole thing because it's a narrative. Um, I advise them to think about books that they read, the Alex Ryder series or any of the books that we're reading in class um, for independent reading are all broken up uh, by paragraph. Within the book, there need to be neat illustrations and they can choose to do them in colored pencil they could print out pictures that they found in their research about what the clothing looked like, what the food might have looked like, what the housing might have looked like to go along with their story. Um, and again, all of this should reflect what the time period was like. Um, I gave them the comparison that if a kid was going to read your storybook, they should still be able to learn some things about what life in Victorian England was like. Um, they are allowed to use a different size style font than Times New Roman or Arial. Um, we talked about that there are fonts that make it look like handwriting. Um, there are fonts that look very old in, in text when we're talking about a, a time period of the past. Um, they could use a cursive font, but they might need to enlarge the font a little bit to make it easy to read. Um, I think in my example, I used, uh, oh, I can't even remember what this one is, Kristen or... Uh, comic Sans would work. And then there just needs to be some evidence of creativity and some neatness to their work. So this portion of the grade is worth 30 points and it goes for the classwork, homework, responsibility portion, which is 20% of the grade. Um, it's really not grading content of what we're actually learning. It's more just following directions and uh, completing the project correctly. Uh, so the next part is the actual writing, and this is worth 50 points and will go into the writing projects portion of the grade, which counts as 40%. Um, so there needs to be some kind of a storyline. We talked about if you were a kid who was the daughter of a maid, you know, what would be a problem that you might have? And so you're just writing it as a day in the life of a kid, interweaving some facts and details about the time period. Um, so I should be able to tell very clearly what the setting is, who the characters are, um, what the conflict that you're writing about is, and by the end, some type of resolution to the problem that you are writing about. 
Within the story, these next two parts are very, very important because they're worth 18 points um, out of that 50. Uh, they need to include parenthetical documentation. And so if you look in my storybook, um, this was my journal, June 22nd, 2013, and as I was writing, I took a fact from my research, I put it in parentheses at the end. And if we go back to my Works Cited page, I can tell that that fact came from this resource. And what I will do is actually look at the research charts to make sure that that fact is documented um, in each individual research chart. Um, and so there need to be six examples of parenthetical documentation, which means there need to be six facts from their research put into their storyline. They need to be labeled and punctuated correctly. There also needs to be a minimum of three varied sentences that are labeled. That's the other thing we've been talking about in grammar. And so you'll see mine are labeled in blue. Um, this one is a compound sentence because there's a semicolon. Um, here's another one. I have a dependent clause. It starts with a, an awubis or a subordinating conjunction. has a subject and a verb after it. And then, where's my third one? Oh, it's way up here and it looks like it's cut off a little bit, but um, it's an introductory prepositional phrase. And so they need to have somehow labeled three different sentences within their story that match the, the varied sentences we've talked about in class. Now hopefully there will be definitely more than three um, because we, we've been talking about varied sentences as a means of making your writing sound more descriptive and fluent and exciting. Um, so I'm hoping that there will be more, but only three have to actually be labeled in this way. Um, the next thing, two examples of dialogue um, within the story. We've done dialogue before. Um, so here's mine. It's unhealthy to stay cooped up in one room all day. Um, you can see that I'm actually missing my end quotation mark, so I would miss a, peer, a point on my punctuation part of this. Um, but there need to be two examples of dialogue. And then there should also be two smiley face tricks that are glossed in yellow and labeled. And so if you look here, um, I have a metaphor. I'm comparing a toilet to a germ trap, and that is a metaphor. And then another one down here, I stumbled into the house, grabbed my wireless controller, and fell asleep in my gaming chair is a magic three, um, which are three descriptive phrases that um, add some description to the writing. So students have a page of smiley face tricks in the writing section of their binder, and we have required these throughout all the writing assignments that we've done all year. Um, in sixth grade, they will continue on in eighth grade. And so this is just um, an example of what it should look like in their storybook. And then, of course, evidence of editing, that there are capitals, punctuation, spelling, grammar usage um, correctly in the paper, and that they have gone back and looked at word choice. Uh, we talked back about that example of uh, the assignment that they did last year in sixth grade about the, um, the dead words like good and nice and bad um, and said. So I don't want to see any of those words in their writing. There should be more description. Um, and we've also talked about transitions so that it's not real choppy, that all their sentences don't start with I or their character's name. Okay, and so this will total to 50 points, which will go as part of their writing grade. And then the last part of this I call the effort process. This just tells me that throughout the process of the last four weeks, um, they've done all the, the steps that I've given them. So we've given them a pre-write. Um, I gave them two days in class to work on this. Um, actually, any day last week, um, they could work on their pre-write or their rough draft in class. Um, so I will be collecting that to look at examples. Some students have told me that they immediately started typing. So what I would expect to see is that they printed off a type draft to show me where they've taken their writing from the draft process to the final copy. And then today in class, I handed out a revising sheet and it looks like this. And really it's just going through and making sure that they have all the things required that, that they need. So they have to go back and list their six facts and show their parenthetical documentation, list their three varied sentences, and then show me some vivid verbs that they used. And if they can't find any of these things, this tells them that that's what they need to work on. So this entire project is due on Friday and this is 
kind of about how long my storybook was. I told them three journals, kind of a beginning, a middle, and an end um, that just tell their story. Okay, so if you have any further questions, if you're absent, please make sure you're emailing me or talking to me um, before Thursday because, you know, that's the due date and you don't want to wait till then to ask me any questions um, so that we can get them fixed. Okay?